Hello, hello, how are you? Welcome to the channel. My name is Elisa Deli. I'm an intuitive tarot reader and astrologer. And today I'm here to bring you a pick a card reading about karma. Um, we're here to see what your karma is, what your current karma that is needing to be um, worked through, transmuted, understood is. Okay, now karma is nothing more or nothing less than the circumstances of our lives, basically, right? Everything that we experience in our lives, all of the events that happen, the people who are around us, the relationships we find ourselves in, the location, the family that we're born into, all of it is karma. All of it is due to the law of cause and effect, the universal law to which none of us are exempt from. We are all subject to this law of cause and effect. And we're here today to hopefully bring you some guidance and some clarity to help you navigate whatever current karma is coming up for you that may be difficult to process or to understand. So with that said, here we have pile one, pile two, pile three, and pile four. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so grateful to have you and I'm looking forward to seeing you in your pile. Sending love. Hello, pile number one. How are you? So for you, what's coming through is that your karma is about you stepping into a new phase where you are able to begin creating, manifesting, and expressing your true soul talents and gifts. I feel that the karma that you're working through right now is something to do with um, a feeling of like grief or heartbreak because you have been putting yourself out there, expressing yourself to the world, um, and being judged in a way that maybe hasn't been up to par or that maybe hasn't been as successful as you would hope it to be with the three of pentacles here in the middle of your reading beneath manifesting dreams by the water spirit there's something about this character that's really drawing my attention here and the three of pentacles talks about having to work together having to be in a group of people that are working but in in this card what's really standing out to me is that this person here looks like a worker um, a laborer, someone who's working manually with their hands, who's kind of being judged or um, directed by these two people over here with the like plans in their hands. So there's something about maybe that you've been in this position where you've been the one who's been subordinate and working under people and putting in the labor and trying to make things happen, but not being judged or not having the results that are favorable to you. And I say that because the Queen of Wands reversed, the Nine of Swords, and Death reversed. So there's definitely some shadow work here that needs to be done that has to do with you being unafraid to do something new, to be different, to transform. This is a card, the Anunnaki Light Clothes, energetic shift, new information, end of a cycle that has to do with change. The mask is also a card that has to do with change, with us trying on new masks. And, and I really love this card because it's so interesting. The concept of this card is that when we try on masks, rather than it hiding who we truly are, what it can allow us to reveal our true selves. That by trying on different masks, by trying on different roles, by trying on different ways of being, this is the way we can discover our true authentic essence and the parts of us that have either been repressed or been, been forced into hiding because of society or our own insecurities or whatever. And this is part of the shadow work that needs to be done here. This is part of the karma that you're working through right now is some kind of a fear of being judged or a fear of being yourself, a fear of transforming, a fear of stepping into your fullest, truest expression with the water spirit of manifesting dreams. And you know, water is the element that is light condensed into, into matter. It's the most 
um, I want to say it's like they're all the elements are essential right water fire air earth they are all essential but I think water is unique in the way that it is um, so vital to all life right and it's like this is a part of you that is vital to you that needs to be expressed that needs to be shared that needs to be shown It's like you've built a solid foundation for yourself but this solid foundation is built on like comfort and conflict is what I'm getting it's like you've 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 um, reached a level of comfort but also a certain level of inner conflict where it's like you're no this comfort is no longer feeling like quite enough for you And the karma that you need to work through is that you need to learn how to get out of your comfort zone, to stretch yourself, to try new things, and to begin the process of death and rebirth, of trying on the different selves, of getting out of this Nine of Swords energy where it's just this feeling of, um, it's not even really so much like depression as much as just like frustration that I'm getting or just stuckness. It's like on the one hand, you've built a sturdy foundation of, of certain things, like, but, but on the other hand, you're missing another kind of foundation, which is this inner, inner alignment, this inner alignment to this new expression of you that's wanting to come forward. So let's see what will assist you in breaking out of this karmic pattern or loop that you're in right now let's see what will help you in this process what will help pile number one in this process of transmuting this karma getting out of this fear of judgment getting out of this fear of transformation What will help pile number one transmute or break out of this karma? Ooh, that went flying over there. And we have two cards for you. Let's see. Ancestral realm, karmic release, healing the lineage, boundaries, and divine matrix, interconnectedness, synchronicity. So for sure, this is a karmic uh, ancestral thing. This fear of being your authentic self, this fear of transforming, this fear of standing out, this fear of being in this full Queen of Wands expression, right? Of fully embodying the Queen of Wands. Queen of Wands is the most charismatic, is the most creative, the most sensual, the most magnetic of all of the Queens. She's the one who's also done her shadow work. That's what the black cat at her feet represents, is the shadow work that she's done. And the black cat sits up there with her because she's unafraid to show it off to the world. When it's, she's not afraid to show her shadows and her, her changed, transmuted essence that has come out of that shadow work. When it's reversed, it's this, um, you know, fear of, not, not quite fear, but just, resistance or blockages or difficulty in embodying this charisma, in embodying this talent, in embodying your full magnetism. I'm feeling that for those of you that are women, this is something to do with um, the women in your bloodline. If you're a woman, this has to do with other women in your bloodline, having had to shrink themselves, make themselves small, manipulate their true essence in order to be um, you know, safe in society. We also have death here, so we have Scorpio energy. So Scorpio and Leo, Sagittarius, Aries. 
You could have Scorpio or fire signs in your birth chart. You might have the north or south node in Scorpio as well, or the moon in Scorpio. So what you need to understand, what will help you break through this, is understanding, first of all, that this is ancestral. That part of this is something you've inherited, that you've come into this bloodline specifically to do this work and to break this cycle. And with this divine matrix, interconnectedness, synchronicity, once you begin the process, once you begin the process of trying new things, Try new things that light you up, that get you into the opposite frequency of the Nine of Swords, right? The Nine of Swords is an energy of like frustration, stuckness, apathy, anxiety, depression, all of these lower vibrational thoughts and, and emotional states. You have to dig in and find new ways of getting out of this vibration. So trying new things, trying new activities. Um, you know, taking care of yourself. And once you begin that process and really get that self-care ball rolling, there's going to be so many synchronicities that come in for you. Because this is a card that's reminding you that you are connected to your higher self at all times. You are connected to all aspects of your being at all times. And if you believe that you are a multidimensional, cosmic, eternal soul, which I believe that you are, then you can accept the fact that you have far more power than what is perceived at this time in your life. That the problems, whatever problems or challenges you may be facing, these are only here to be an opportunity to be a catalyst for you to change, for you to transmute, for you to grow beyond them. Because you're here to manifest your dreams. You're here to embody and to step into your full um, potential. I'm actually going to read this card from the deck. I'm feeling called to do so. Your dreams can come true, truly. However, there are a few steps necessary for this to occur. First, believe that you deserve it. Know that you are worthy. You are. Act as if your dreams had already come true. Move your body like someone who desire, whose desires have been manifested. Most important, you must also take action in the direction of your dreams. This is not the time to sit around and passively wait for things to turn out. Give deeply and fully who you are. For the more that you give, the more that you will receive. Allow your emotions and feelings to flow. Don't repress or suppress the truth of your soul. As you focus on gratitude for what you already have, more joy and abundance will grow in your life. Water energy traditionally represents your feelings and emotions. As in all things, too much emotion can be depleting and too little emotion can be draining. When your emotions flow as clearly as a mountain stream, then you are at a pivotal time to distinctly state your intentions and dreams and the forces of the universe will answer and support your dreams coming true. The spirit of the water says, water flows in cycles and right now you are in a cycle of manifesting your dreams. Don't stop the flow by doubting or hesitating. Allow your emotions the freedom to be expressed. Timing is everything and right now is your time. Yeah, so you're really encouraged, pile number one. You're so encouraged to try new things. And notice here, we have 46, which adds up to a 10, which reduces to a one. And you are pile number one. So the one energy is about leadership, boldness, being first, <laughs> being a way shower, trying new things. It just feels, pile one, that you have so much potential, so much incredible potential at this time. But the main, the crux of the issue is you have to be willing to take action. And I want to say, pile, pile one, that this action that you need to take is something where it's like for, a, for, for at least a period of time, disregard what other people have to say about it. Disregard the judgment or the critiques from others. Maybe even begin making moves in silence. Like don't tell too many people about what you're doing. Just start doing it. Just start expressing yourself. Just start trying the new things. 
doing the doing whatever the thing is and putting it out there trying on the different masks of yourself right allow this period of time where you're experimenting and following your intuition and following your desires to be a time where you can play with what feels good with what feels authentic with what feels true for you right and and allow yourself to try on the different versions of yourself that up until now haven't had the space haven't had the time haven't had the protection necessary to fully be expressed you're protected and you're supported at this time it's time for you to try new things okay let's get an archetype card to see what archetypal energy will support you in this process what archetypal energy will support you in this process of manifesting your dreams of go taking actionable steps that in in the new direction in the new path that is yourself right let's see here what will help you in this process of transformation and stepping into your full authentic essence? What archetypal energy will help pile number one in this process of stepping into their full authentic essence? Green, I'm hearing. So something about maybe the heart chakra, maybe wearing green, maybe um, spending more time in nature. What archetypal energy will help pile number one step into this new energy and break out of this karmic cycle? What can they embody? What can they invite into their psyche that will assist them? Thank you. I've got two for you. Let's see. Priest. Light attributes. Facilitate spiritual commitments. A uh, com yeah, facilitates spiritual commitments, serves as a channel of spiritual energy. Shadow attributes, violates trust of your spiritual community, seduced by your own spiritual role. And beggar, light attributes, confronts empowerment at the level of physical survival, awakens the spiritual authority of humanity, compassion, and self-esteem. Shadow attributes, dependent on others for the exclusion of effort. Okay, so with priest here, I can see that your dreams, your, your authentic essence has something to do with a very spiritual role. And the message here is to begin offering offerings. If they said whether this is putting yourself out there on social media, whether this is to start taking clients, whether this is to start like giving free readings or sessions to your friends and family or people that you trust to begin, you know, practicing and honing your skills. It's to begin, begin that process, right? And this beggar energy, I'm getting this, this message that it's like, begin with a, a humble offering, right? Don't, um, it's, it's something about like pricing, Whatever your pricing is, don't overprice nor underprice. Choose something that's a very moderate price. Um, come see what's out there in the market compared to what it is that you're trying to offer and do and give yourself a moderate price somewhere in the middle. And also to not fall into this beggar situation. Remember when I was talking about the beginning of this reading where it's like you've been putting yourself out there somehow or you've been being judged by others and it hasn't been getting the results you want, don't believe that just because you're not getting the results you want immediately that there's not progress happening. Begin the process of putting yourself out there. Begin the process of doing things at, a, at maybe even for free for some of you, right? If you're right at the beginning of your practice, if you're still trying to gain um, enough like experience so that you can start charging, it's there's something about that for some of you there's others of you that already are more advanced each of you is going to be different you have to be discerning for yourself where you're at on your journey but begin the process of offering your services to people and do not wait for 
um, approval or, or recognition that will naturally come as you put yourself out there more and more. Yeah, I'm getting this sense that you are a channel for spiritual energy with this priest. So whatever it is that you're doing, Pal One, whether this is like creating music or art, or at, maybe you're a reader yourself, or maybe you are um, another kind of like Reiki healer or something like that, you're, ch you're a channel for energy. You're a channel for ideas. You're a channel for cosmic and multidimensional inspiration to come through. And it's time for you to fully, uh, you know, step into that role and try that and do it to do it you're allowed to do it and this is something that's going to break this ancestral not curse but ancestral karma that has been weighing down especially the women in your bloodline who have been unable to fully express this spiritual priest or priestess energy that have been unable to fully step into their spiritual powers and role you're here to do that and to to, to break this okay pile one Ooh, all right, so I think that's it for you today. I want to thank you so much for being here with me for this reading. It's been an honor and a pleasure for me to sit down with you and to do this for you. Um, I want to say thank you to your higher self for allowing me to bring through these messages to you. Thank you for choosing me to be the channel through which you work. I'm grateful. And um, if you're interested in a personal reading, I am available. My information is down below, and I hope to see you again in another reading soon. Bye, Pile 1. Hello, Pile Number 2. So, you are my healers, my caretakers, my social workers, my activists. Um, you guys are your karma has something to do with bodily healing. So you may be someone who's working like as a nurse or a caretaker or a doctor, or you may have be in a process where you're healing your own body. With bare spirit healing and the sustainer underneath, the sustainer is a card that talks about the humble work of someone like a nurse, for example, or a mother the kind of domestic or um, caretaking work that often goes unthanked and unnoticed and unseen, that's not very glamorous, that's not very um, uh, acknowledged or valued by um, society in general, okay? And with the advocate and the tear here, I see that you're someone who's very compassionate, that you can really feel into the grief of the world. You're someone who, it's like you can feel, you're very empathetic. You're very empathetic and you're very empathic. You're very attuned to the um, pain and emotions of others and these deep emotional connecting to others is is something that that pushes you to, into action that pushes you that's like something that motivates you is the way the suffering that you see in others and in the world motivates you into action okay um, and you're a, a, an exceptional manifester as well with the seed and the emerald tablet of activation cosmic ordering divine alchemy conscious manifesting the seed is also a card that talks about manifesting right the seed having the blueprint to, you know, the acorn um, having the full potential of the oak tree in that little acorn, right? So what I'm seeing here is to me, what's coming up here is it looks like your karma might have something to do with you healing yourself and putting yourself first, placing yourself as the center, the nucleus of your own life rather than sacrificing yourself for others, rather than focusing on others, rather than giving yourself um, overly into this either advocate or sustainer energy where you're just giving, giving, giving so much of yourself. There seems to be some, your own healing that needs to be done. 
And with the four, number four, with the bear spirit, that was the card that drew you into this, this, this reading. Number four is about stability, right? It's about solid foundations. It's about making sure that we have like the, the meat and bones of the thing in order, you know, the, the primary necessities and needs and, and things taken care of so that everything else can flow. Yeah, I feel that you've been in this sustainer role for a long time. I actually want to read that from the, from the book. I'm being called to do that, so let's do that for you. Peacemaker, the upholder, the preserver, the sustainer, the second eye archetype in the trio of existence, works behind the scenes, tending to the tasks of life. They cultivate gardens, pay bills, keep the meals warm, and the mouths sweetly fed. The sustainer is at peace in the process of life, knowing there is no start or finish to humble yet meaningful tasks. They have a natural inclination to nourish others to achieve, to preserve Earth's resources, to archive, excuse me, not to achieve. They have a natural inclination to nourish others, to archive, to preserve Earth's resources, to consider environmental impact, to see their role in the divine cycle of life. It's common for the sustainer to become overworked, leading to resentment. Their tasks aren't glamorous, and therefore, the sustainer rarely receives the credit or attention, the, or the credit or attention. The sustainer longs to hold things in place so badly, especially relationships, that they can resist necessary change. Take time with this archetype. It is within all of us and needs our love. When light, abundant, generous, supportive, reliable. When dark, overworked, resentful, trapped, tired. Yeah, I'm feeling that this is your karma right now. This overworked, resentful, trapped, tired energy. Where it's time for you to put yourself first, pile number two. Let's see, what will, what will help pile two break out of this, this karmic pattern that they're in this karmic cycle of being overworked, of not putting themselves first, of over giving and over sacrificing themselves. What will assist pile number two in this process please? Stepping out of this karma. What will help pile number two? Thank you. Star gathering, stars aligned, remembering home, soul, family. What will help pile number two? What will help pile number two in breaking out of this karma, please? What will help pile two break out of this karma? Chariot reverse. You first have to want to break out of this karma, pile number two. I have a feeling that for some of you, you guys are in situations, relationships, situationships, jobs that overwork you, that um, take you for granted, that don't value you at your, your, don't value your sustaining efforts. Don't value your deeply healing nature. Don't value how much you've manifested and how much you create, how much you give of yourself to the cause to the job, to the relationship, whatever it is. There's, there's a part of you that needs to want to get out of this karmic cycle. I feel that there's a bunch of you in this pile here, not a bunch, but like I would say a solid half of you that are not even quite fully ready to admit 
that you are overworked, that you are resentful, that you are tired. There's a part of you that is so strong and steadfast that you want to just keep pushing forward. You want to just keep sustaining. That's your, that's your thing. That's what you do, right? You're the healer. You're the sustainer. You're the caretaker. You're the mother, some of you, right? Um, you are the one in the relationship who always gets things done, who makes sure that everything's on track and taken care of. But it's time for you to acknowledge that this has been overworking you. This has been exhausting you. This has been depleting you. And it's time for you to start taking care of yourself. Can we get the, a clarifier for the star gathering card, please? For what will help them break out of this karma? Ooh, we got two. It fell here on the floor. Let's see. King of Cups reversed. And the Six of Pentacles. Yeah. This is, um, there's a misaligned energy in relationship. And some of you guys, this may be intimate relationships. Some of you guys, this could be work, a work situation. Whatever it is, it's a situation where you have been emotionally manipulated into getting into an unequal energy exchange. Yeah, eight of swords reversed at the bottom of the deck. It's, it's about you um, releasing yourself from the responsibility of being the one who always has to sacrifice being the one who always has to give more than receive. Being the one who always has to put compassion into action. It's time for you to, to be on the receptive end of some of that. And you know, this King of Cups, this could be someone else in your life where it's a... Um, It's a person in your life who perhaps has been, you know, when the King of Cups is reversed, it can be someone who is emotionally manipulative, emotionally, um, emotionally manipulative, right? Someone who is emotionally manipulative and who takes advantage of this advocate energy, who takes advantage of your deep compassion, who takes advantage of, of, the, of, you, of your essence, because they have, they have the emotional capacity and depth and complexity to see this within you, but they also have the emotional capacity and depth and complexity to then manipulate it. So this could be a, a misaligned Scorpio energy. This could be misaligned Cancer or misaligned Pisces. So if any of you guys are dealing with people like that, it could be man or woman, doesn't really matter here. The king just represents the mastery of whatever element it represents. So the king of water is the mastery of emotions, the mastery of, of emotions and relationships. And it, when it's reversed, it's the mastery of that in the negative sense. With the six of pentacles, someone who is manipulating you, right? You've been, you're being manipulated, pile one, and it's not fair. And this stars gathering, stars aligned, remembering home, soul, family, it's telling you that it's time for you to break out of this relationship to align yourself to who you truly are, which is this beautiful, compassionate healer, and you deserve to be surrounded by other beautiful, compassionate souls who can reciprocate your energy, who can pour into you as much as you pour into them. But in order for that to happen, you have to be willing to break out of these de dependent dynamics. With the chariot reverse here, you have to be willing to leave the situation. Now we're going to read the bear spirit healing card. This card will appear to let you know that healing on all levels is occurring and it can come in many forms. Be ready to accept it. 
Know as well that you are a healing force for others. You may not even be aware that you are a conduit for healing energy, but when others thank you, simply say you're welcome, even if you don't know how it happened. In many native traditions, bear spirit is thought to be aligned with humans, as he can walk upright like a human. He represents the healer and the good medicine. He also bestows healing powers to those worthy. You indeed are worthy. The bear spirit energy can also represent grounding, strength, and confidence. It activates as stable foundation to face whatever challenges appear in your life. The spirit of the bear says, You're a healer and a channel for the life force of the universe. You are strong and grounded. Healing is unfolding and or a situation is being resolved. Have faith that all is well. I'm going to read the first two lines of this card again. This card will appear to let you know that healing on all levels is occurring and it can come in many forms. Be ready to accept it. You have to be ready to accept this healing that's coming in for you. You have to be willing to, to, um, to break out of these dependent dynamics, to prioritize yourself as first and for foremost. Prioritize your own healing, your own inner work with the strength card, with the seed and emerald tablet activation, cosmic ordering, divine alchemy, conscious manifesting. You are a very powerful person, pile number two. You are a conduit for healing energy. You are a natural healer, a multidimensional natural healer. Anyone who's naturally inclined to this kind of sustaining work to the sustainer archetype, to the advocate archetype, you are a natural healing cosmic force that is here to uplift others, to nurture, to heal, to, to regenerate. You are such a beautiful, beautiful energy to tap into. You are just such a compassionate and loving person. And all of that energy that you are able to transmit into this kind of work that you do you can transmit that into anything that you want. And it's not to say that you should stop healing or advocating or caring, right? But that you should also look within to your own, to your own essence. And pay attention to what seeds you are planting. And plant seeds in the direction of your own transformation, of your own healing, of bringing forth your own shadow aspects uh, that maybe have to do with having a difficult time receiving right? Healing is happening on all levels. Be ready to receive it. Be ready to get out of these codependent dynamics. Be ready to move forward in a new direction towards victory, towards strength, towards overcoming. And it's not about being forceful or bullying your way through, bulldozing your way through, which can be what the chariot reversed is about, but I'm really feeling that this is more that it's a resistance to to accepting this healing. It's a resistance to receiving this healing and using that as to propel you forward. Is there anything else that Pile 2 needs to know to help them break out of this karma, please? Is there anything else that Pile need, 2 needs to know to break out of this karma? To break out of this karmic cycle? To transmute and leave behind this karmic pattern? Anything else that Pile 2 needs to know to break out of this karmic pattern or cycle? Knight of Wands. Four of Cups, Seven of Swords reversed. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Knight of Wands reversed here again with the King of Cups. This is to me reinforcing this kind of... Um, Knight of Wands reversed to me when we're talking about relationships is like fuck a boy energy, right? Someone who is not worthy of your care. Someone who is not worthy of your... Um, of, the, of all that you give. Someone who has been in an unequal exchange of energy with you, you have to be willing to 
leave that behind. You really do. And there's something about like rest, rest and contemplation that's coming through with this, this four of cups together with the chariot reverse, the chariot upright is about movement forward movement. I feel that you've you've been working hard for a long time. You're tired. <laughs> you're you're tired, pile two, and you need to replenish your own energy and take care of yourself. Seven of Swords reversed. Put down the fight. Put down the battle. Knight of Wands reversed. Don't move forward. Stay where you are. There's something about waiting, waiting, putting the pause on, giving yourself, taking some time off if you're able to, um, giving yourself a break, like rest rejuvenate relax um you know the number four again making sure that your foundation your inner foundation is well tended to take care of yourself and put down the burdens of others put down the need to try to justify yourself to others or to make others understand it's time for you to come into alignment with yourself by yourself for yourself that's all you need to do right now, pile two, is just to take care of yourself, put your own healing, your own, put your own essence at the forefront of your mind. What do you need to do to feel your best? Do you need to sleep more? Do you need to change your diet? Do you need to make more time to prepare your food so that you have a better diet? Do you need to, um, uh, you, you know, do you need to ask for a couple days off of work? Do you need to ask your partner or a neighbor or someone else to help you take care of the kids so that you can have some time for yourself? You need to figure out ways that you can practically organize yourself so that you can take some time to rest, take some time to go within, take some time to receive this healing that is wanting to come in for you, okay? And give up the fight of trying to like make things force things or try to get to people to understand you or to, to make things happen. It's time for you to just retreat and take care of yourself. All right, pile number two. Pile number two, I just want to remind you that you are a most bright cosmic soul a most bright cosmic being. You innately carry so much wisdom, so much love, so much Christ consciousness, so much compassion. And that is something that is worth defending, worth tending to, worth taking care of, worth being a little selfish about. It's, it's, I know this can be hard for people who are very empathic and compassionate, but it's important to be a little bit selfish and to put yourself at the, uh, as the most important thing that you can protect and take care of because this way, when you are well taken care of, you can then give to others and take care of others in the best, most optimal way possible. All right, pile number two. This was a beautiful reading. I'm sending you so much love. I'm so grateful to have a soul like you here on the channel. I'm so grateful to have a, a compassionate, caring one like yourself here with me. Um, you are a bright, bright light. Make sure that you take care of it. All right, pile number two. Thanks so much for being with me here until the end. If you resonated with this reading and it was helpful for you, uh, I encourage you to give the video a like. It really helps me out. If you're interested in a personal reading, my information is down below in the description box. Sending you so much love, pile two. Hello, pile number three. How are you? So as I was preparing your pile, um, I was really getting drawn to this. I don't know if you can see on camera. This figure of the, a god or a man holding onto a bolt of lightning. And I was hearing personal power as I, as I tuned into that energy. And the rest of your cards really reflect the, what I heard, personal power, beautifully. With the mountain and serious star blessings. I usually don't take reversals with this deck, but... Today it felt right to take it. Um, the, it says, yes, proceed, be seen, push through. It feels like you're learning to, yes, proceed, be seen, push through and provide for yourself and get past feelings of disappointment, apathy, or fear that may keep you from personal power, from taking control, from going after what you want. With the Ace of Pentacles, the Nine of Pentacles, and the Ten of Pentacles, I can see clearly that this is about you 
being able to provide for yourself in some way, being able to um, manifest in the real world the things that you need to feel safe, to feel secure, to feel um, provided for and taken care of. But, but this is about you providing for yourself and taking care of yourself, right? And with judgment here, I can see that this is a big, big karmic lesson where you're learning how to discern, how to push through self-limiting beliefs, how to push through any feelings of, um, dis of feelings where it's like if you're not seeing results right away where you'd just give up, you know, feelings of like where it's like if you're not immediately successful where, that, where you think, oh, well, this means that this isn't my path or where if things aren't just like immediately, yeah, immediately going well, then that makes you believe that somehow you're not on the right path or you're not on track, but you are pile number three. And it's about this personal power, understanding that you are the God of your own life. You are the creator of your own reality through your thoughts, through your actions, through your habits, through your repeated behaviors. You are the one who creates your reality, right? And with the mountain here, I can see that you're very ambitious, that you want to go to great heights. But be aware that it's about going into the mountain, not to the top of the mountain. The gems, the riches, the reward, the financial success and breakthroughs are going to come the more that you go within the mountain of your own being and your own essence. The more that you go into yourself, the more that you go into your inner being, into your shadows, into your truth, into all aspects of your psyche, the more you explore and go deeper and deeper within yourself and unravel those self-limiting beliefs, unravel those inner child wounds, unravel all of that stuff, the more you go into that, the more rewards you will get. Rather than focusing on trying to get to the top of the mountain and be number one and be above other people, don't compare yourself to others. Focus on you and within yourself only. That's going to be the thing. That's your karma right now, is you focusing on yourself and coming into your personal power and stepping into your nine of pentacles energy where it's like you're independent, you're secure, you're earning, you're earning a living for yourself by yourself and you're not falling into any feelings of apathy or disappointment, fear or withdrawing from the world um, because of fears of, 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 or because of like a pattern. This is the karma, right? This is your karma that you're breaking out of. The karma that you've been carrying up until now is that you haven't been able to push through this. You've been in a state of um, not being able to claim your personal power, not being able to manifest in the way that you would like to in the world, not being able to bring in the kind of abundance and financial security that you, that you feel you deserve and that you do deserve. You always needing to look for outside confirmation and signs to show you that yes, you're on the right path rather than you being a self-determinating factor in your own life and steering the ship of your life in the direction that you wanted to. You've been kind of in this stage for in this karmic loop where the rather than you steering the ship and you sailing in the direction you want to go to, you've been like a ship that's just getting taken in all different directions, whatever the tide takes you, that's where you've been going, rather than you steering your ship. And the, and the direction you wanna steer in is financial stability and security, is some kind of success with the work that you do in the world, with the way in which you provide for yourself, with the way in which you acquire the stability that you, that you deserve and that you want and desire. And you're at a point right now, pile number three, where it's you have the, the wherewithal, you have the perspective to see this. And it's like now it's your opportunity to push through, to break through, to claim your personal power and to strike at your life, right? And with the chaos um, storm spirit, this can be when it's like we need a little bit of chaos in our lives, when we need a little bit of change. Or it can be a reminder that if there is chaos happening in your life right now, that it can be used as an opportunity for growth rather than something that keeps you stagnant. So take it as it resonates. Some of you, if you've been stuck in kind of apathy, if things haven't been moving forward, if you feel like you've been in a rut and just in repetition, 
Create some chaos. Do something different. Step out of your comfort zone. Invite Uranian, Uranus energy into your life. Maybe you're going through a Uranus transit. Look to where Uranus is in your birth chart for more inspiration and information. For others of you, if chaotic things are happening all around you, how can you use this chaos? How can you harness this external chaos for internal breakthroughs and growth? How can you use the, this as a, as a mo moment and a motive to push you forward on your goals? Okay, there's also something coming through about the star Sirius. For some of you, you have an actual connection to the star Sirius. I'm being drawn to the way these people are here naked and they're under this angel. But the, above the angel is what? The star Sirius. That's what I'm being drawn to. Some of you need to commune with the star Sirius. So go out. The star Sirius is one of the brightest stars in the skies. And um, it's pretty easy to find. If you can find... Um, Orion, you know, Orion's belt with the three stars that, that that's the, one of the constellations that most people know how to find in the sky. Look for Orion and Orion's belt and then off to the right, a good distance away from the belt, a, a good fair distance in the sky, maybe like a palm's distance. If you hold your palm up to the sky, maybe a palm's distance from Orion to the right. Actually, I don't know if it's going to be the right or the left for you. I'm in the southern hemisphere, so to me it's to the right. You see this very, very bright bluish star, blue twinkling star that's got a lot of different light in it, and that is Sirius. If you're having struggling finding it in the sky, do a quick Google search to help you. I'm sure that you can figure it out, but get under the star Sirius and connect and commune with that star. <laughs> um, spend some time with it look into it, ask it for your assistance, for assistance and help and guidance. Sirius to me is a star that aligns us to our inner being and to our higher self. Sirius is a star that connects us to our multidimensional essence and to the part of us that is eternal and with us from lifetime to lifetime and pulling us forward on our evolutionary journey. So by connecting to the star Sirius, you're connecting to another part of yourself the higher part of yourself, the part of yourself that is, can assist you with this. Just open yourself up to the energy of the star and receive. Make eye contact with it. Open your palms to it and open yourself up to receive energy from that star. That will like charge you up and empower you so that you can do this lightning bolt striking action that I'm seeing here. I'm really resonating with this pile, pile number three. I think this is probably my pile um, of, you know, the karmic cycle that I need to break out of. Um, because it feels like pile number three, that you are a powerhouse, that you are strong, that you are, that you know who you are and that you know what you have to bring and give to the world. You know that you, that you have so much potential, but I think that you have been struggling to put that into practical real world 3d tangible results for you okay you may have your north node in the second house the sixth house or the tenth house as well you may have a north node um, destiny in one of these houses that is calling you forward into this kind of more financial stability security and strength especially the second and the tenth house okay Let's see, what archetypal energy will assist you in this process of breaking out of this karmic cycle and karmic loop? What archetypal energy will assist pile number three in breaking out of this cycle, breaking out of this loop? What archetypal energy will help pile number three, please? And, you know, pile three... And the number three is the creation car, uh, number, is the manifestation number, is the thing about, you know, 
bringing something into the 3D real world realities, manifesting, creating. So it makes a lot of sense. So let's see here, pile three, what archetypal energy will assist you in this process? What archetypal energy will assist you in this process of breaking out of this karma? Child, orphan, light attributes, independence based on learning to go it alone, conquering fear of surviving, shadow attributes, feeling of abandonment that stifle maturation, seeking inappropriate surrogate families. So, yes. Let's see your other one. Hedonist, ooh. Light attributes, inspires creative energy to embrace the good things in life, celebrates the beauty in yourself, shadow, shadow attributes, pursues pleasure to the detriment of health, indulges at the expense of others. Independence based on learning to go it alone, conquering fear of surviving. So pile number one, this is exactly what we're talking about, right? This is exactly what you are going through right now is stepping out of the shadow attributes of feelings of abandonment that stifle maturation. So you probably have gone through a lot of things in your life, pile, pile three. You've probably had a lot of difficult things happen to you. Maybe some abandonment in childhood, maybe um, uh, you know abandonment, early death, um, mothers, fathers who were absent. So pile three, maybe you've been indulging a little bit, overindulging, pursues pleasure to the detriment of health, indulges at the expense of others. This could be also part of this maturation process and learning how to conquer your fear of surviving is to not overindulge, to not fall into those, um, those self-sabotaging tendencies that the excessive shadow attribute of the hedonist can be Enjoy your life, enjoy the pleasures of life, enjoy the sensual, physical, 3D um, things that, that money can provide and that having a stable and secure life in this world can give you. Enjoy those things, but not in excess. You're here to conquer your fear of surviving, not to get lost in the excessive pleasures of it. Okay, pile number three. And making sure you're staying grounded is another message that's coming through. I'm feeling a lot of high vibrational energy. I'm feeling a lot of this Uranus energy. Again, you may be having a Uranus transit right now. Look in your birth chart. But it's important for you to stay grounded during this process. Because, the, you know, with the mountain and all of the pentacles here. And together with this storm spirit, with the lightning and the Sirius card. It's like you've got a lot of high vibrational energies that you need to ground that you need to carry in your body and that you need to apply to, to manifest into the world. And in order to do that, you need to stay grounded. All right, pile number three. I wanna take this time to thank you so, so much for being here with me. It's been an honor and a pleasure. I wanna thank your higher self for choosing me to be the one to channel this message through here for you. Um, it's been a true honor and a pleasure. And if you are interested in a personal reading, my information is down below. If you got here all the way to the end and this resonated for you and was helpful for you, I encourage you to give the video a like. It really does help me out. It helps me understand what's resonant, what's helpful, what you guys wanna see more of. And yeah, I think that's it for you, pile number three. Thank you so much for being here. Hello, pile number four, how are you? Uh, if the lighting is different, the setup looks a little different, that's because it is. It's a different day than when I filmed the intro. So your karma, pile number four. First of all, I want to say that your energy is very potent. The karma that you're moving through right now has to deal with integrating your potent frequency. You are a very sensitive, high vibrational, like energetic person. You're someone who's probably very intimidating to other people. I think you're the kind of person that when people come into contact with you, they get triggered by you or they have a hard time. Um, yeah, you, you, you're, you're, not, you're not for everyone. You're not for the faint of heart. You're not everyone's cup of tea, right? 
you're more like a cup of ayahuasca, right? Like that's kind of what the vibe I'm getting from you, pile number four, is that you are just this incredible, you have incredible depth and sensitivity and strength within you. It's like the combination of like a high, high vibrational energy, but also in combination with this kind of like animalistic, feral, um, wild, kind of like untamed or unattainable energy that is very alluring, powerful, and intimidating to many people, okay? And the karma that you're in right now, pile number four, is learning how to harness all of that power and that strength and that sensitivity and that spiritual high vibrational energy and harness it to manifest and to create what you want out of your life, to make something for yourself, to create something that that to plant seeds and to then have harvests come from those seeds that you plant. And I think pile number four, I think the issue may be is that you are someone who, maybe you've relied a lot on this kind of innate power and strength that you, that you have within you. You've, you've relied a lot on this like dragon animal energy that you have that's just so potent on its own and kind of has a momentum and almost like a gravitational field of its own where it's like you don't really maybe you haven't needed much else it's kind of been something that's been self um fueling and self propelling and you maybe haven't needed to be very disciplined you haven't needed to be very focused you haven't needed to be very um focused but I think that your karma that you're coming into right now is learning how to focus your energy, learning how to focus your energy and how to harness the power that's already innately within you and streamline it towards a goal, streamline it towards a manifestation, streamline it towards a better future. Your karma right now is you, I think you're getting out of like a dark night of the soul kind of period where it feels like for many of you, it's been years, several years that you've been, th that's where you get all your power from, right? That's why you're so powerful, Pile 4. It's because you've spent years in this underworld energy. You've spent years digging through your subconscious. You've spent years going through your, th going through your karma. Like this is, you know, this is where I feel like you have a lot of eighth house energy, south node in the eighth house, sun or moon in the eighth house, maybe a stellium in the eighth house. You're just someone, you have a lot of um, depth and you've been in the depths for a long time. And the karma that you're moving into right now is how to get yourself out of those depths or how to harness all of the wisdom that you've gained from those depths and aim it accurately towards a goal that you have for your future, right? Because with the animal and the dragon and the Lemurian seed codes here, it's like, I feel that you are someone who um, may have a hard time knowing what it is you exactly want. You may have a hard time ha having a target that you wanna shoot for. You may have a hard time knowing what it is that's going to make you happy because you've been so long in these depths just like unearthing and uprooting all of the things that have been blocking you from your happiness, right? That have been blocking you from, from your power and your strength. You've been clearing all of these channels, removing all of this debris, energetic debris. And it's like now that your energy is really clear and really strong and really fine tuned, it's like you now it's like you have a really sharp knife or a really strong um, like bow and arrow, but you don't have a target to, to of where you're going to shoot the bow and arrow. You have you have a really fine tuned tool that is you, that is your spirit, that is your essence, but you don't have a target yet. And that's making you feel antsy, frustrated. It's making you feel um, feel like maybe you just want to like give up and like not have a target and fuck a target and just 
Um, maybe you're waiting for some kind of guidance or something to like show you the way rather than you taking the initiative and 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 um, and, and you deciding which direction you're gonna go, you know? Yeah, pile, pile four, I really feel that it's time for you now, rather than to wait for some kind of guidance or synchronicity or something externally, to show you which way to go, or rather than waiting for some kind of breakthrough moment or perfect opportunity, it's time for you to pull from within yourself, get in touch with your desires, get in touch with your joy. You've spent so long in this underworld energy, you've spent so long clearing, now it's time for you to think about what is your target, what's the thing that you're shooting for, that you're aiming for. and. How can you begin the process of taking practical steps to go about getting there? Because there are smoother, there, there's better things ahead of you. There's more good things that are going to be coming. We have the six of, of swords here. Like this is the only tarot card that came out upright for you for your karma. It, which is telling me that there, there is, there are better opportunities ahead. There is a better mental state, especially ahead of you in your near future. However, what's going to need to happen in order to get that better mental state, in order to get to a better place, in order to feel better about your life and, and, and what your karma is that you're working through now is how to get out of your karmic pattern of overdoing the shadow work. It's like your dark night of the soul. You've done all the work. You've cleaned out all the gunk. Now it's time to take actionable steps, one step at a time, one foot in front of the other to move forward towards your goal. an archetypal energy to see what's going to assist you in this process. What will assist pile number four in this process of taking these steps forward, of discovering what they want to aim for, discovering where they want to shoot, what target, what, what target feels exciting for them. Yeah, it's time for you to get out of this underworld energy, out of this like, out of this dark night of the soul energy and into a more lighter energy, into a more fun energy, into a more um, like carefree and relaxed sort of energy is what I'm feeling. Because that's going to allow you to free up some space in your energy to begin taking the steps forward. Okay, what archetypal energy will assist pile number four? What archetypal energy will assist Kyle number four at this time? Sorry, a little mosquito. Kyle number four. What archetypal energy will assist Kyle number four? Thank you. The fault line, yes. And the maiden, yes, 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 yes. So the fault line, I love this. It's, it's a card that really talks about this, where it's like, okay, it's like, um, you know, when you're at the breaking point, when you're at the edge of something, when you're right on the, when you're, when you're pushing, when, when it's like, when you're making the edge of your, when it's, when the edge actually becomes your center, right? When the edge of your comfort, when the edge of your experience, when the edge of, of your perceived reality you, you walk to that edge and you make that edge your center and you, and you realize that you're at this breaking point where it's like there is, um, there's no going back and it's time to commit because you're in, on precarious ground and if you stay too long on this edge, it could crumble and crack beneath you and it's time to take decisive action about which way you want to go and with the maiden, the maiden energy is very innocent soft, almost naive. Um, it's a very romantic energy, a sensual energy. It's more fun and lighthearted. Notice how colorful it is compared to all the other cards that came out for you. It's um, a much more feminine, feminine energy, receptive energy. So sensuality, um, 
working with roses, uh, spending time like in water. I'm getting the image of like a, someone drawing a bath with like oils and crystals and like a bubble bath, <laughs> like getting into some soft energy, some, some feminine receptive energy. And I would recommend pile number four that you start getting clear about what your values are. What do you value in this life? What do you value? What's important to you? Because once you get clear on what you value, it will become easier for you to know what target you want to aim for and to start taking the steps and making the moves to get there. And to not stay lost in this, um, in this realm of trying to, of this dark night of the soul where it's just been for so long about you calling your power back, about you gaining spiritual power, gaining your own spiritual gifts, like focusing your primal life force energy and um, maybe you've been doing a lot of intense spiritual practices, maybe you've been, um, for each of you it's going to be a little bit different, but you've been in the trenches for a long time and it's time for you to come out is what it feels like. feeling called to read the 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 dragon card which is the card that drew you into this to begin with into this reading this card suggests it's time for you to step into your power and take charge of your life look to see if there is anyone in your life who is trying to run the show Speak your truth and take back authority of your own life. Release any fear of misusing your gifts. True strength doesn't dominate or manipulate. It's a gift from the creator that dwells within you. You have, this, you have the spiritual power that's born of sacred love, wisdom, and grace. This ability can heal others and bring light into the darkness. You are a radiant, glorious being. Dragon Spirit as your, at your side is a mighty ally. He empowers you with healing and restorative abilities. He helps you overcome any obstacles and he protects you in all areas of your life. Within you dwells the remarkable power to manifest your dreams, gain great riches, and activate ancient wisdom. Take back your power and express your strength with grace. Yes, pile number four. It's time. It's time for you to step in as the authority of your life, which you already are. You've worked hard. You've, get, you've earned your stripes. Like you've, <laughs> you've already put in the work. You don't need to keep digging into your own shadow. You don't need to keep um, trying to, to heal yourself. You can move forward into this re reclamation of your power with a little bit more lightheartedness with a little bit more playfulness, with a little bit more ease. It doesn't, even though we have like the Emperor and the Eight of Pentacles here reversed, which both talk about being very assertive and working hard, I feel that for you, you've been working hard for a long time. So it's, it's but you've been working hard internally, inwardly. Now it's time to work hard externally, how to put all of the wisdom that you've gained, all of the power that you've gained, all of the strength that you've gained to good use. You know, the first energy that was coming through when I was pre preparing your pile was this full moon energy. And the full moon is a very powerful time, right? It's the, it's the moon at her peak of energy. It amplifies things. It reveals things. It shows us the truth. And as far as manifestation, I feel that for you, working with the moon cycle and with the full moon in particular is a powerful way for you to amplify your intentions and your manifestations, to amplify your strength because you are so sensitive. Because you are so sensitive, pile number four, uh, using the full moon as a, an amplifier is going to assist you and it's going to be a time where you are naturally at your peak energy. So take advantage of it. Use that time. Use that peak of energy to your advantage. It will be helpful for you. It'll be easier for you. It will feel more natural to try to put plans in actions, to go after your goals, to 
um, you know, plan important events or, um, or presentations or, or, or job interviews in and around the full moon. That will be, that will be very helpful for you. And I'm really feeling that for you, pile number four, it's, it's a spiritual path that you're being called down. It's, it's this path that you're being called down to express this spiritual strength and power, this healing power that you have, this very, very high vibrational, but also very earthly, very sensual, very animal energy. This, it's like a very nice balance that I'm feeling between this like high vibe energy and also it's very grounded earthly energy and I think you're here to help people tap into that themselves and to help people see that going into the underworld going into the shadows going into our our, our darkness that's where we gain light that's where we gain strength that's where we gain power Also, what a message that's coming through is to spend time outside, spend time in nature, spend time with your bare feet on the ground, in the mud, in bodies of water. Um, that's going to be very helpful for you. Maybe even for some of you going like camping, spending a couple days out in nature it will be very beneficial for you. Um, and just enjoy yourself in nature. Do things that make you feel good. They keep dragging me back to the archetypes deck, which is showing me again the depth of your soul. This is a very deep, intense uh, oracle deck, and all the other piles, I only got called to shuffle it once, or uh, you know, I, I, I shuffled once. I got the first set of cards, and that was it. You're the only pile where I've been called to return to it, not not only once but twice. So, what is the final message here that pile number four needs to hear? What is the final message for pile number four, please? What is the final message for pile number four? Your depth is your strength, I'm hearing. So yeah, it's not about negating your depth or negating your darkness or negating all of that, but it's about not getting stuck in the depths, I think. Pile number four. Okay, yeah. A whole bunch of these flipped up. We're, we're going to take just this one, the river and the lovers <laughs> and the judge underneath that. But that's it. That's all we're going to take is the river and the lover. Let's see if there's one more that wants to come out for pile number four. Final message for pile number four, please. Final message for pile number four. Which one of these, please? The tear, the tear, the river, and the lover. Oh, and look, we have another one here. <laughs> the bardo. Yeah, it's just so much intensity, pile number four. You are so intense. I love it. I mean, I'm about it. I, I have a lot of Scorpio eight house energy myself, so I'm down with the intensity. But it's like you are so intense. You have so much, so much energy. That, I think you're so intimidating to a lot of people, <laughs> pile number four, I really have to say. And you know, I think it's about you embracing the, the fuller spectrum of your emotions. From joy and bliss and happiness all the way to grief and despair and depression. It's about you embracing and accepting the full, full spectrum of all of these emotions, allowing yourself to cry if you need to, getting in a body of water, the river. This is an energy that's so, I think, beautiful because it's about nurturing and cleansing and clearing our energy field by allowing ourselves to feel emotions and allowing them to run through us, right? And the lover card here is a card that's very that talks about, you know, kind of wearing rose colored glasses, romanticizing our life and romanticizing our experience, focusing on the beauty in the world around us, focusing on the, 
the, the, you know, the, the way that grass feels or the, a beautiful flower, you know, it's kind of that stopping to smell the roses vibe, right? Taking the time to really pay attention to the beauty, the joy, and, and to, to allow yourself to be in awe of like how beautiful the world is, how wonderful life is. To put rose colored glasses on, rose tinted glasses, to, to, to see the world through. You've spent enough time in this underworld bardo energy. You spent enough time in the depths. You you're you're queen or king of the depths. <laughs> you and I think and and you've you've learned how to extract the beauty and the um, wisdom from those depths. But you like I said, you don't need to get stuck there. Your depth is your strength. That's what I heard. Your depth is your strength, but it doesn't need to be. The, the, the only place that you reside. The depth doesn't need to be the only place that you are. Don't worry about that pile number four. You're naturally gonna bring the depths with you wherever you go. But focus a little bit more on this like softer, more feminine energy. Bring in more color into your life. Interesting that even the dark cards here have a little bit more color than the other cards that we got for you earlier. I'm going to read this bardo. They're asking me to read this, and I think that's going to be your final message. So let's see. The liminal, the in-between, the transition. It is said that the bardo is the place between this life and the next, a liminal realm through which souls pass. Envisioning this inherently mysterious space creates the potential for us to rise above the concerns of this world and see our relationships through a cosmic and timeless lens. We may receive messages from those who are no longer with us or see visions of lives not yet lived. In the bardo, there is potential to forgive the unforgivable, to say the unsaid, to see the unseen, to love the unloved, and to let go of all things that cause us pain. The bardo suspends us in its spaciousness for just long enough to open us to higher wisdom. Its energy does not belong to earth as we know it, but rather to the cosmic network of which we are a single thread. When light, spaciousness, grace, forgiveness, truth. When dark, torment, dislocation, hallucination, transience. Spaciousness, grace, forgiveness, truth. So pile number four, if you feel called to do any kind of like shamanic journeying or any kind of like plant medicine or something like that that has been calling to you to do like a final, <laughs> a final purge, a final visit to this bardo where you can, um, you know, maybe um, release yourself from anything that you feel is holding you back from embodying your power, from stepping into your strength and from you moving forward and taking the actionable steps towards the target that, and, and, and you figuring out what target it is that you want to aim for, you know? I think that that might be helpful for some of you, only if that's something that's already been in your mind. If this is like brand new to you, if this is a brand new suggestion, this is probably not your message. This is a message for those who have been considering doing some kind of like thing like like uh, maybe hypnotherapy or past life therapy or a shamanic journey, soul retrieval, um, sitting with plant medicine. If those any kind of those things have been like in your mind already and you've been considering doing that, this is a message I think to do that. But for all of you, pile fours, the strongest message I see here is to embrace joy as best you can by allowing the full spectrum of your emotions to reside within you and embrace everything and don't hold back. And even if you're not exactly sure what it is you're aiming for, as long as you have a general direction that you know, okay, this is the general direction in which I want to move and you start taking those steps in that direction you're going to start seeing results. Things are going to start to flow in your life and you're going to start to feel much better.
I want to thank you so much for being here, pile number four. You're a powerful, powerful soul. And I feel very honored to have been able to bring these messages through for you. I want to thank your higher self for choosing me to bring this, these messages through to you. It's been an honor and a blessing for me. And if you are interested in a personal reading, my information is down below. If you made it here all the way to the end and this was resonant and helpful for you in some kind of way, uh, I would encourage you to give the video a like. It does really help me out so much. And maybe I'll see you again soon for another reading. I'm sending you so much love, Pile 4.